This morning, I am continuing a series that, that, we, that we're, we're talking about the subject of conversing with God, conversing with God. Last week, I um, ministered a message entitled Best Practice. It's on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for The Rock Valdosta. You'll find it there, Best Practice. And the best practice for you and I in our lives and in 2024 and beyond is to keep conversing with God, keep talking with God. And last week, I laid just a broad foundation, and this morning, I want to drill down, and for the next three Sundays, I want to drill down into a particular area of this whole idea of conversing with God. And this morning, I want to drill down into an area in a message that I've entitled, Hearing God. I want to drill down into hearing, hearing this morning. To do that, I want you to turn away to 1 Samuel chapter 3. It's a little bit of an extended text, but it will serve us well. 1 Samuel chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord said, called Samuel. Samuel answered, here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, here am I, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. So he went and he lay down. And again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood there, calling at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. Father, I praise and I thank you this morning for the privilege of this word that we hold in our hands and we hold in our hearts. I pray that you, by your spirit, will open this word to us and let us hear about hearing. Lord, it's so critical, so critical that we hear you, especially in today's world when so many are saying so much and yet saying nothing. We want to hear from you. So teach us, Holy Spirit, this morning about hearing. We thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Right now as I speak, at this very moment as I speak, the auricule or the lobe of your ear is collecting sound waves that are in the air. And the, it's, sending it, it's actually sending it down the ear canal or the auditory medius at which amplifies that, that funneling of the sound from the lobe into the inner ear, into that ear canal. Actually, that funneling of it actually amplifies it. That's happening right now. That amplified sound then hits the, hits the timnic membrane or the eardrum, which begins to vibrate. That vibrating then begins to, right now, this is going on right now as you're speaking, uh, the ossules, that is three tiny bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, then begins to be set in motion in your inner ear, and that actually amplifies the sound yet again. That, that, that um, moving of the, that vibrating or that moving of those three tiny bones actually then sends the sound into the inner, inner ear and the cochlea, the cochlea which is filled with fluid and it begins to, it begins to vibrate, it begins to move. That, that fluid in the cochlea then begins to actually, it begins to, so three different times the sound is amplified as it's going into your ear. The cochlea then is attached to the, uh, uh, to the cra- eighth cranial nerve and 25,000 nerve endings right now, 25,000 nerve endings are sending that electronic signal to the brain and the brain then takes those signals and, it, and assigns them meaning. And all of that is hearing. The point is this, hearing depends on a lot of factors and so does hearing God. And so does hearing God. There's a lot that can go wrong. There's a lot that has to happen right. But hearing depends on a lot of factors, and so does hearing God. This morning, I want to do something. Uh, uh, I want to take, and I want to just give you a little historical context from what we read, the story that we read. 
And then I want to give you some observations. Now, if you have your outline there, I want to just tell you this. Listen, two things if you look at your outline. First of all, don't panic. I know you can see that there are 10 points and 13, uh, 13 uh, blanks there, and that is double normally what I do. But, but these observations that I want to give you, they're critical and they are important, so don't, don't panic. Uh, I'm going to, only going to touch on them. They don't require a lot of uh, explanation, but I do think it's important that we hear them that we might hear better. That's the reason I included all of them this morning. And so don't panic. And the other thing is don't read ahead. <laughs> Some of you are already doing it. If you read ahead and don't pay attention, you'll miss the moment, right? There's a lesson in itself about hearing God. So don't read ahead. So, so first let me give you a little bit of history just so we can get the context of what we're talking about here this morning. And then I want to make some observations about hearing from Samuel's experience. First, you've got to understand, Samuel remembers the young boy that was returned back to the Lord by Hannah, his mother, and given back to the Lord to serve in the temple of the Lord. And so Samuel was serving Eli as his servant in the temple of the Lord. Eli had been a great priest at some point, but somewhere along the line, Eli refused to listen to God and refused to correct his sons, both of whom were also in the priesthood and were corrupt. So corrupt that God eventually determined, I am going to judge Eli and his house, and I'm going to take the priesthood from Eli and from his house. Samuel could, evidently Eli could not hear, and so God spoke then in a vision to Samuel and told Samuel what he was about to do. And Samuel then reluctantly shared that with Eli. Eli makes the strangest thing, that makes the strangest response to that, and he basically says, God will do what is good. In other words, Eli realized, he, Eli knew. Okay. How many of you know? When, 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 you're, when you're guilty, you know you're guilty. You know you're guilty. Eli knew he was guilty. And eventually God did just that. He judged Eli, took the priesthood from Eli, and then raised Samuel up and made Samuel both prophet, priest, and a judge in Israel. So that's the context of what is going on there. But what I want us to do this morning, I want to make some observations about hearing that we can learn from Samuel's encounter. Some observations about hearing that we can learn from Samuel's encounter. First of all, the first thing that I observe as I read this story about hearing, one thing that I realize about hearing is this. You need to be in a place that you can hear God's voice. If you, if you, in other words, if you're going to hear God's voice, you need to be in a place where you can hear God's voice. And if you'll notice there, Sam, uh, Eli was reclining in his room, but Samuel was where? Samuel was in the house of the Lord, and he was where the ark of the presence of God was. You need to be in a place. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that there is necessarily a physical place that you need to be. I am telling you this. Your soul needs to be in a place where it can hear God. If you're going to hear God, your soul needs to be in a place where it can hear God. And you and I are responsible for putting, uh, for putting ourselves in a place where we can hear God. And um, uh, by the way, I'm not talking about necessarily a physical place. As this series unfolds, you'll see that God is speaking everywhere all the time. But there is something about putting our soul in a place where we can hear God. My soul needs to be in a place where it can hear God. If not, my soul is in trouble. More on that in just a minute. I'll talk about more of how to do that in just, in just a moment. But, but the first lesson is this. You need to be in a place. The first blank there is a place where you can hear God's voice. So my question to you this morning, are you in a place where you can hear God? I hear people all the time talk about, God never speaks to me. And I want to say, well, where are you? Well, where are you? Kind of like Adam in the Garden of Eden. Right? Where are you, Adam? Where are you? Are you in a place you can hear God? The second thing is this. You can hear God's voice and not recognize it is him. Oh, that's important. That's important. Samuel did not recognize God's voice. And you can be in a place, and sometimes it can be innocently so. And I'm, I'm not saying that I have the ultimate solution to that. I, I, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. But I'm just telling you, sometimes God's speaking to us, and we don't even recognize it, right? God can speak to us through all kind of means and in all kind of ways. And, and the lesson for me is to recognize that God sometimes speaks, and I'm not recognizing it, so I need to be more aware. You can hear God's voice and not recognize that it's God. Any, anybody, any of you ever before, you've gone through a situation or circumstance that God was speaking to you, and after you get through it, you look back and say, my goodness, God was trying to tell me something I did not recognize. It was his voice. It's important for you and I. This is just a, it's an observation. It's a lesson for us to remember that you can hear God's voice and not recognize it's God's voice. One of the reasons goes, and it's related to number three. Here it is. This is you got to listen to this and carefully. 
We interpret God's voice through what is familiar. At least initially, we interpret God's voice through what is familiar. Samuel, watch this, was most familiar with Eli, and so he interpreted God's voice through what was most familiar. The same thing is important for you and I to remember, and that is in our life. We can't, let, all of us do it. Nobody is immune to it. It's a part, it's a function of being human beings. But I can tell you this. When God speaks to you initially, you are going to interpret it according to that which is familiar, which is why you need to pay attention to what you are familiar with. What, what you are familiar with in your life, the most familiar voice in your life, oftentimes it's going to place that you initially interpret. In fact, we do, we do it all the time. We interpret what we hear according to what is familiar. Gerilyn and I, this week, we were walking down the street. We had to park a ways to get to the place that we wanted to eat. We were walking down the street, and there were several uh, individuals our age, or, or actually, they were all older than us. <laughs> and somebody, somebody up the street said, Daddy. And about six guys turned and looked at the same time. And the lady laughed and she said, she said, oh, are your children here too? And of course, they, they, they weren't where, but what did I do? I interpreted what I heard according to what is familiar. And you and I do it at the same time. And listen, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to lay it down here. If you are familiar with things, if you are familiar with things that are not speaking God's voice, you'll interpret God's voice through those familiar things. You need to pay attention to what you are familiar with. What you are familiar with. Fourth thing, fourth thing that is this. Those who know God best hear him best. Come on, somebody. Samuel, it says, we're told in the initial scripture that Samuel did not yet know God. The word know there is an interesting word. It means to notice, to learn to realize, to be cognizant of, to be aware of, to be aware of. In other words, this, 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 you and I can know God. We can notice God, learn God, recognize God, realize God, be aware of God, be cognizant of God. And the good news is this. There is, this is not, when I say those who know God best hear him best, I'm not talking about a special group of people that can hear God better than other people. I'm saying to you, God wants you to be familiar with him so that when you interpret things by what is familiar, you interpret it according to God. In other words, you need to be able to speak God's language if you're going to know what God's saying. And those that know God best, those that learn God, recognize God, those that are cognizant and aware they can learn God. This is, it is called about being familiar with God. If you want to hear God better, learn him, know him, recognize him. Gerald and I, um, I, I wish I had every quarter that I, pay, that I fed into a pay uh, phone. When Gerald and I work in the four years that I, we were dating three and a half years, and I worked at, uh, at the hospital, and I had to go down. This was before cell phones. Yes, I am that old. But I wish I had every quarter I paid into that pay phone. Now, 40 years later, 40 years of marriage later, I can tell you, Gerald and I both, we learned each other's voices on that pay phone and have learned it and continue to learn it ever since. And I can tell you, I can tell you 40 years later, nothing, nothing has to actually be said for me to know what's said. You know what I'm talking about, husbands, you know what I'm talking about. She, she doesn't, it's in her voice. It's, I, I know her. Because I know her, I know what she's saying. And the same way with me. I'm telling you, God wants us to be that familiar with him. He wants us to be so familiar that when he sighs, we know what he means. Anyway, any of you been riding down the road in the car with your spouse, right? And, and they sigh, and you know it means something, right? You know it means something. God wants you to be that familiar with him. Because the better you know God, the better you will hear him. Amen. I want to be so familiar with God that when he sighs, when he breathes, I know it's his voice speaking. Amen. God wants you and I to be that familiar with him. The fifth thing, these are just lessons. These are just lessons. When you need to hear God, God will reveal himself. There's an interesting statement in this story. It says that the word of God was rare in that time. Visions were rare in that time. It even goes so far as to say Samuel had not at that time had no direct revelation of God. That was Samuel's time. I have good news for you this morning, though. 
We are living in a day today that God has revealed himself as never before. We are not living in Samuel's day where the word of God is rare and where the visions are rare and where there is no direct revelation. In fact, we are living in quite the opposite. That God has revealed himself as never before. He revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He revealed himself in the word that you are holding, the written word that you are holding in your hands right now. He reveals himself through his Holy Spirit which lives inside of us. Never ever before has there been an occasion, a time when God has revealed himself more. And I'm telling you this morning that when you need to hear him, God will reveal himself to you if you are listening. If you will hear him, he will reveal himself to you. God, listen, God is speaking to us in more than he has ever spoken to us before. And when you need to hear God, God will reveal himself. Listen, God God is not in the business of keeping back from you. That's a lie of the enemy. It started in the Garden of Eden. That God somehow is keeping back from you. God is not in the business of keeping back from you. God wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to give and to bless you. But you and I need to be in a place where we can and hear God. And I'm just, I'm just, I hope this is encouraging to you this morning that when you need to hear God, God will reveal himself to you. You just need to be in a place to hear. The sixth thing is this. The sixth thing is this, and this is, this is critically important. When God keeps calling, he wants you to hear. He wants you to hear. Listen, when God keeps calling, he is trying to get your attention. Right? Are you following me this morning? When God keeps calling, he's trying to get your attention. God called to Samuel four times. God called to Samuel four times. He called his name six times because the last time he, I'm, I'm five times because the last time he called it twice. And God, listen, God, God kept saying, Samuel. Samuel, 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 because he was trying to get Samuel's attention. In fact, God wanted to get Samuel's attention so much that he used Eli, the old corrupt prophet who couldn't even hear from God, to tell Samuel that it was the Lord's voice. Can I tell you something this morning? God is calling, trying to get your attention. And when God says, Tyler, 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 pay attention, God's trying to get your attention. Hello? When, when God says, Rochelle, 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 he is trying to get your attention. Same thing is in your life and my life. Listen, sometimes we just, we, we let God's voice, it just kind of bounces off of us. And, and we don't really, sometimes you need to set up and pay attention. Like, wait a minute, God is trying to get my attention. He wants to tell us something. And can I tell you something this morning? I made the statement last Sunday. God wants to tell you something. God is wanting to speak to you even right now this morning, which leads me to the seventh one, which goes with the sixth one. To hear God, you must answer. You must answer. To hear God, you must answer. In other words, if God is calling, pick up the phone already. Right? One of the worst... Well, I don't know. I'll just say it. One of the things that has interrupted communication more than anything else is call waiting. The invention of call waiting, I submit to you, the invention of call waiting has interrupted communication perhaps more than anything else because it does a couple of things. One, call waiting takes our attention off of the conversation we're having at the time. Call waiting also allows us, now listen, I'm just going to be transparent, and you are the same way, so I'm just going to say it. Call waiting also allows you to screen those calls you don't want to answer. Did I, do I need to hide? Hello? You do it too. Don't you look at me like that. You do it too. And I can't tell you something. When God calls, you better not put him on call waiting. You better not screen his call. You better pay attention. Listen, when God calls, pick up the phone. You've got to answer. And the best answer, the best answer is the answer that Samuel had. Speak, Lord. Your service listening. 
Can, can I tell you something this morning? Mark Batterson says that's the most dangerous but important prayer that you can pray. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Every one of us, in fact, that's going to be assignment at the end that we memorize that scripture, 1 Samuel 3, 10. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I want everybody here this morning to say it with me right now. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. That's the best answer you can give God when he calls. When you recognize that God is speaking to you, when you recognize God, God is saying, when you recognize God is trying to get your attention, the best thing you and I can do, Joe, is to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Amen? Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. The seventh thing is this. I'm sorry, the eighth thing is this. Now, this is where it gets a little real. You are responsible for what you have heard from God. You are responsible for what you've heard from God. When God shares something with you, when God tells you something, you are responsible for it. Now, that responsibility, sometimes that responsibility is for you just to pray. Can I just let you in on a little spiritual secret? Just because God shows you something about somebody else does not mean he's given you the authority to go and correct them about it. It may be that he just needs, he just wants somebody else praying and interceding. In fact, in my experience, it's been most of the time that's what he, he just wants me to pray about it. He just wants me to pray. But you're responsible for that. If he gives you a vision, if he speaks into your life, if God says something into your life, um, he, you are responsible for that. Listen to me this morning. Listen to me this morning. If God is saying something to you about your marriage, you're responsible for that. If God's saying something to you about your attitude, you're responsible for that. If God's saying something to you about your job, you're responsible for that. If God's saying something to you about your soul, about some sin in your life. If God's saying something to you about a dream or a vision or something that he wants you to do. When God speaks to you, you and I are responsible. Samuel was responsible for what he heard from God. Even though a young boy, he was responsible for what God said to him. And the same is true in your life and my life. When God speaks into our life, we are responsible for it. Having said that, that leads us to the ninth thing. And the ninth thing is this. You must hear God before you can say what God is saying. In other words, you can only say what you've heard. You can only say what you heard. In fact, there is, a, there is a, um, uh, an ENT, and this goes back over 100 years. There's an ENT named Dr. Tom, Tom um, can't hardly pronounce his name, Tomatus, 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 I'm sorry, Tomatus. And he discovered that the voice can only form what the ear can hear. And if the ear can't hear it, the voice can't speak it. That's why most people that are deaf are also unable to speak. Because if you can't hear it, you can't speak. And can I tell you something? The same is true in your life and my life too. Uh, I, I just, I'm just going to say it. It's a, it's a soapbox of mine, but it's so true. So many people are saying so much today and not saying really anything at all. And saying God said it. And saying God said it. Listen, you, you cannot say what God said until you hear what God said in the first place. That's true for the pastor standing in the pulpit. That's you as the priest of your household. That's you as the priest of your own soul. That's you as a parent to your children. That's you as an employer in the workplace. Listen, if you want to say what God said, you've got to take time to hear what God's saying in the first place. Amen? And, and it's just so critical. It's so important. We can only say what we hear. It's how, how much more important, how critical it is that you and I hear what God is saying. The tenth thing is a bit of a warning. A bit of a warning. And it's not about Eli. I'm sorry, it's not about Samuel so much as it's about Eli. But it's important that we understand it. Refusing to hear God will make you deaf to his voice. Refusing to hear God will make you deaf to his voice. It's called selective deafness. Selective deafness. If any of you have ever been around parents who have... A lot of children are noisy children. You know what I'm talking about. Those parents have developed selective deafness. Brittany says amen. You can be standing there trying to have a conversation with them. I mean, it's like all chaos is going on. I'm, pe pe people are yelling and screaming and talking and tugging. and, and talk. yeah, I'm not talking about Paul and Brittany. Why are y'all looking at Paul and Brittany? 
I'm just talking about parents in general. You, and, and man, they're standing there in the, whole, in the middle of it the whole time. They're carrying on a conversation with you, and you look and say, I know they're trying to tell me something. <laughs> selective deafness. They don't hear it. But as funny as that is, can I tell you, we develop selective deafness to God because we don't want to hear what he's saying. And I'm telling you, this is, just, this is the only part of this is just warning, just outright warning this morning. That's a dangerous position to be in. Listen, if God is speaking to you about your marriage, he's warning you. If he's speaking to you about your moral life, he's warning you. If he's speaking to you about the way you're doing business, he's warning you. If he's speaking to you about the person that you are engaged to, he's warning you. If he's speaking to you about decisions that you are making, he's warning you. Don't become deaf to God's voice. He's trying to tell you something. But if you refuse to hear him long enough, God won't stop speaking. You'll stop hearing. You'll stop hearing. It's a lesson that you and I need to learn about hearing. So here's the point, the key point for the whole message this morning is this. God has something to say to you, and it's critically important that you hear him. And that's not just a one-time occasion that is, or an event. That is an ongoing part of our relationship. God has something to say to you. Say it with me this morning. God has something to say to me. It's critically important that we hear him. Critically important. So having said that, I'm going to give you three things this morning, three important aspects. These are not all-encompassing. These are just three things that I feel like the Lord would have me emphasize this morning. These are three important aspects of hearing. They're the last three blanks on your, on your page. The three important aspects of hearing. One is posture. I referred to it later, earlier, about setting your soul. Posture. The word is posture. You need to set your soul to hear. You need to get in a place where your soul can hear God. Now, let me, there are a number of ways to do that. Let me just mention one, one way that you set your soul to hear God is by having a regular place to talk with him. A regular time, a regular place to talk to him. You, you want to set your soul to hear God? One, one way to do that is have a regular time and a regular place. God knows, and I know, that about somewhere between 3 and 4 in the morning, that I'm going to be sitting in my recliner talking and listening to God. It's a regular thing. Don't call me at 3 or 4 in the morning. I'm going to see it on call waiting, and I'm going to screen it. Because I'm talking to God. Regularly. But you need to set, being regular in a time of place, another way that you can set your, set your soul to hear God is being involved in a community. That's one, another reason that church is so important. The New Testament model is that God speaks through his people, and part of that means you and him being involved in a community of faith where God is speaking. That's another way you can set your soul. Another way you can set your soul, another way you can set your soul is being around people who hear God. Being around people, surround yourself with people who hear God, other voices that hear God. Find people in your life. You know, listen, there are, there are some people in my life, and Geraldine and I probably have the same list. We can take them. There's some people in our life that we know can hear God, and when something's going on in our life, I got to tell you, there's a, there's a, there are a handful of people that I'll call because I know they can hear God. Their life has demonstrated it for years, and I know they can hear God. I want to surround myself with people that can hear God, that can hear God. And, then, and another way is to, what I call, be intentional. Be intentional. And that's what Geraldine and I did. Sometimes, sometimes, yes, you need to be regular. You need to have a community. You need to have other voices. But sometimes, every now and then, in fact, I believe it's important, if there's any way possible, to every, for every individual should do this once a year. That is where you are intentional, that you pull away. It's what Geraldine and I, you privileged us to do this week. We were able to pull away, not... Answer texts, not answer phone calls, just be intentional in hearing God. I came across a formula uh, a while back that I, that I love, that I fell in love with about being intentional. And here, here it is. Change of pace plus change of place equals change in perspective. Change of pace plus change of place equals change of perspective. Sometimes you've got to pull away and go build a campfire somewhere. Sometimes you've got to pull away and close yourself in a room without your phone. For a season to be intentional. That, that is posturing your soul to your God. The second thing is this. Anticipation. Anticipation. Expect God to speak. In fact, one of the things I'm going to do before I finish this series, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about 
how so many ways that God speaks. God is speaking in so many ways, and most of them we actually just miss. And I, one of the messages that I'm going to preach the, uh, before I finish this series about all the ways that God speaks, and I'm doing that so that you and I can be aware of them so that we can anticipate God speaking into our lives. And I believe to hear God, you've got to anticipate that he is speaking. You've got to expect God to speak. So posture your soul to hear God and then expect, anticipate God to speak. Anticipate him to speak into your life and to move into your life and to tell you things, as Isaiah 30 says, things that are great and awesome and that you otherwise would not have any way to know. And the third thing is this. Invitation. Invitation. Answer him when God speaks. I'm hearkening back to the point that I made a moment ago. Invitation. When God speaks, I, I believe the best answer we can give. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. You know what that says? That says, that says first of all, you are Lord. You are Lord. So I'm listening to you. Secondly, it says, I'm your servant. I'm awaiting on your command. I'm awaiting your voice. The third thing it is, is this, speak, Lord. Lord, I know you want to tell me something. I know you want to say something. So I am inviting your voice into my life. Inviting your voice into my life. In fact, I challenge you to make, uh, I've talked for two or three years now about the importance of memorizing Scripture, and I know some of you have started doing that on a more regular basis. I, I just encourage you to memorize 1 Samuel 3.10. 1 Samuel 3.10. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I'll close with, real quickly with a couple of stories, real, real brief stories in my own life, mine and Geraldine's life. Both occasions we were trying to make decisions that was monumental for our life and our ministry. One occasion happened 26 years ago, 27 years ago. Geraldine and I, we were in a transition in ministry. We had been an associate pastor. We knew God was calling us. We knew God was calling us into full-time ministry. We had tried out at a church here in the state of Georgia and had been voted in that morning at 100% or that night at 100%, 100%. And um, went back to the motel room. And I had told the board ahead of time, I said, uh, regardless of the way the, board, the, way the, boy, the, way the vote goes, I, I've got to hear from God. I've got to hear from God myself. And so I went back to the room. It was late at night. Me and the girls and Geraldine were we were there in the room, and they had all gone to sleep, and I just slipped up, found a chair in the corner, and I just said, God, it seems like, it seems like this is, I mean, 100% vote, and I need to hear from you, God. And in that moment, God spoke as clear as anything I've ever heard in my life. He said, you are not to accept this church. I have a place for you. And he told me the exact place that he was going to sign for me. And by the way, I didn't even know the place. I just knew the name of it. And what little I did know, I, as far as I knew, they were, they were in a great place. God was doing great things. He said, he said, you're not to accept this church. I have another sign before you. I'm going to send you here. Done. Said. So that's what we did. We, we told him we couldn't and, um, and moved on. Fast forward another 12 or 15 years. Geraldine and I, we're in a season in our life and we just feel like God's moving us. We feel like God's going to do something. We're just feeling like it. And we, we, <laughs> we know that feeling. We sense, we believe it's God's voice, but the circumstance, I'm telling you, every circumstance you can imagine, we, we tried to get... Um, jobs in that town. Nobody would hire us. Can you imagine anybody not hiring us? We couldn't find jobs. We couldn't find a place to live. Um, I, I talked with other individuals, and the other individuals um, you know, were saying, listen, man, you're in a good place. Why in the world would you want to move? I mean, all the circumstances, right? And yet, there was just this thing that we just were feeling this. And so we finally just said, Lord, we just place that in your hands, and, and it's uh, Five months went by. Five months went by. And I got a phone call on a Sunday afternoon. And God had opened the door that he had spoken to us about five months ago. The point, the reason for telling both those stories is God speaks in all kinds of ways. Sometimes he will speak in the moment. 
Sometimes he'll drop something into your heart and you won't know the meaning of it for a long time. But in all of those occasions, it's important that you and I hear God. Keep conversing with him. Keep listening to him because I know this. And it's not just my life. God wants to say something in every one of your lives, no matter where you are, place that you find yourself in. God has something to say to you. You and I need to make sure we're in a place that we can hear. If you want to know what God is saying, here's the main idea. It's the last point on your outline. If you want to know what God is saying, be sure you can hear. Amen? Amen. Stand up with me. Hmm. Lord, we come to you this morning and we understand and recognize and realize that you're speaking to our lives and speaking in our lives in ways that many times we can't even understand and cannot hear and cannot discern. But Lord, we're asking you to speak into our lives and we're asking you to help us to hear. Help us to hear when you speak through all of the various ways. Help us to hear when you speak through your word and through your spirit. Lord, tune our ears into you. Let us hear what you are saying. Because what you have to say matters. It's important, God. And it is my prayer that we as a church, that we can hear you better than ever before. And to do that, we must know you better. So help us, Lord, to learn your voice, to know your voice, and to listen for it, and to pay attention to it, and to hear what you are saying. Lord, we, I, I just say, Lord, I declare it as the pastor of this church, Lord, over this congregation, Lord, I, Lord, our, our answer to you when you speak, Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And, Lord, that's where we want to be. And so we ask, Lord, that you speak to us, that we might hear you. There are great and awesome things you want to tell us. Lord, the individual this morning that's in a dark place, you want to speak to them. The individual this morning that may be, has pulled away from you, you want to speak to them this morning. The individual, Lord, that you've been speaking to and speaking to and speaking to this morning, I believe you've convicted their heart. They've, they don't want to hear it, but Lord, I thank you this morning, God, that you've convicted their heart and they're going to pay attention. Speak to them again, Lord. Don't let them cast that aside or cast that off. And in all of our lives, there are great, incredible things you want to do. Help us to hear you, Lord, to hear what you were saying. We thank you. We praise you for it today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I encourage you to be here next week. I'm going to preach a message entitled, When God Whispers. When God Whispers. You're going to want to be here next week. Memorize 1 Samuel 3.10. Join us on Wednesday night as all of the activities are going on. And Jill and I are going to be leading prayer. Till I see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the blessings, Lord. God bless you. I love you. Be sure to listen for God this week. He's got something to say to you.